A few minutes ago, before Lucas attacked Art, he had been struggling as he was getting blasted around by the Guardian. With the exit just in sight, he thought of ways he can escape. His growing pride becomes a hindrance, and he gets consumed by the notion that his survival must be prioritized, for he is from the mighty Wyke family, the very house that led to Sapin's resounding victory against Eleanor. He's willing to do anything, even betray his comrades. With this mindset, he uses a powerful spell on Art that sends him flying. Seeing this, Jasmine becomes horrified and runs to help him. However, Lucas continues his betrayal and uses a powerful spell on Jasmine, nearly killing her. Elijah is quick to react and saves her using his earth magic. So Lucas turns on him as well. Right now, the only thing on his mind is his survival. He tells Elijah that they should be honored as they will go down in history as heroes who delayed the beast long enough for him to escape. He fires off another spell to the roof. This causes the entire structure to start caving in. While being distracted by Lucas, Elijah gets attacked by the Guardian. He is unable to react in time and incurs heavy damage. Just as it seems like he's about to get killed, he is saved by Brawled. He is still mentally unstable, but he cares about his comrades. He attacks the Elderwood Guardian head-on with his fire magic. Despite successfully landing a powerful blow that slices the Guardian in half, his triumph is short-lived as the formidable creature swiftly regenerates. This leaves Brawl terrified as he realizes how hopeless it is to fight against this mighty opponent. On the other hand, a barely alive Art slowly regains consciousness. He looks around to see all of his comrades injured or unconscious from Lucas's attacks. He realizes that there is only one thing that can be done. However, he's unsure if he can survive the recoil. Suddenly, strange glowing marks start appearing all over his arm and his eyes turn purple. This is the phase two of his dragon awakening. During his training in Eleanor, he had breakthroughs that left Virian constantly baffled. His first improvement was unlocking the first phase of his beast will, the acquire phase. This allowed him to tap into Sylvia's innate skills. He could temporarily separate himself from time and space. However, this phase was limited in a lot of ways due to how much strain it put on his mana core and his physical body. The second breakthrough was something that even Art did not expect. What had taken Virian decades to achieve, he managed to achieve the same feat in just two and a half years, the integrate phase. Art's hair suddenly starts turning white. A purple aura starts surrounding his body as he delves deeper into the second phase. Elsewhere, even Sylvie notices the change in Art's body through their telepathic connection. She has grown a lot bigger due to her training for the past two years. Sensing something's wrong, she quickly rushes over to Art's location. However, Art assures her that he's fine and tells her to stay away for now. He instructs her to go back to Helstie's house if anything goes wrong. Now in the integrate phase, Art gets ready to attack the Elderwood Guardian. He forms a powerful white flame on his left hand and leaps toward the Guardian. He continues with his attacks, hoping that he can survive the backlash. It causes Elderwood Guardian great damage. The flames quickly destroy all vines and turn them into ice. Even though he can utilize all this ambient mana in this form, his body still can't handle the spell. He quickly starts to feel the backlash from using the integrate phase, but he shows no signs of wavering in his assault. The fight quickly intensifies as both of them start unleashing powerful attacks. Art uses his spell to continue freezing the vines. However, the backlash finally sets in as his hand becomes brittle and starts to crumble away. However, before the damage becomes even greater, he manages to freeze the Elderwood Guardian completely. With his other hand, he forms a massive attack. He combines the fire, water, and electricity element into one and punches the frozen Elderwood Guardian. This causes him to shatter and finally die. As the severe strain of extended integrate phase usage takes its toll, Art starts bleeding and quickly collapses. Meanwhile, in Exire City, Alice and Ray are taking care of Eleanor. The two parents are happily looking after their daughter when suddenly they're left horrified as Alice's rings start glowing, indicating that Art's life is in danger. With a flicker of consciousness, Art slowly opens his eyes. He finds himself greeted by the comforting presence of Elijah by his side. Elijah is relieved to see that Art has finally awakened. Using whatever few words he can muster, Art instructs him to take one of the healing constructs from his glove and break it. He follows Art's instructions and breaks one of the crystals. This causes the healing spell sealed within to get released and he gets healed along with his left hand. The first thing Art does is ask about Jasmine's whereabouts. Elijah points in her direction, showing him that she's also safe. However, her condition is really bad. She was hit a lot harder by Lucas's spell than him because her body wasn't fortified with mana. 
Although Elijah used a medical kit to treat her burns, she still has internal damage. Art asks him to take another crystal from his glove and use it on her. After doing so, Jasmine's injuries become a lot better. Her breathing starts looking better as well. Elijah assures Art that she's going to be fine after a few hours of rest. With that, he can finally breathe a sigh of relief. His current condition reminds him of when he was four years old, the time when he fell from the cliff. We see Sylvie continues making her way toward Art. Lucas, on the other hand, managed to escape from the dungeon. Art once again reassures Sylvie that he's out of danger now and instructs her to focus on her training. As Art rests, he begins to feel a sense of relief as his condition improves. Likewise, now that they are out of harm's way, Elijah also starts to unwind and relax. He now knows the true identity of the legendary masked swordsman and is surprised that he's someone that he tested together with and someone his age. With that, Art suddenly remembers that he has lost his mask. Elijah apologizes to him, telling him that it fell off during the fight and he couldn't get it. However, the most important to Art is his sword. Elijah assures him that his weapon is safe and within reach, understanding its significance to Art. Even though he didn't know if it was valuable or not, he decided to keep it just in case. Art extends heartfelt thanks to him for his remarkable actions in saving both him and Jasmine, as well as safeguarding his valued belongings. In reply, he humbly states that he couldn't fathom leaving them in a half-dead condition, for such a decision would have placed him on the same level as Lucas. Elijah becomes curious as to why Art decided to stay when Jasmine was trying to get him to leave. Art jokingly tells him that a king never betrays his people. However, the real reason is because of his promise to Sully to become a better person. He realizes that they're going to be stuck there for a while until Jasmine recovers, so he decides to use this time to get to know more about Elijah. Art initiates the conversation by extending a polite introduction to him, establishing a respectful and courteous tone from the start. He notices that the metal shelter around them doesn't seem to be naturally made. He asks Elijah if he is the one who made it. He tells him that he conjured it when the cavern caved in. This was to protect them from the debris. The Elderwood Guardian's body was the one supporting the entire cave, and when they defeated it, the entire structure started to collapse. Art realizes that Elijah is a deviant, as it is only possible to manipulate metal, not create or conjure it. However, that is only attainable by a dwarf. He agrees to share the details but with one condition. He asks Art to disclose what he did during his encounter with the Elderwood Guardian. He wants to know about Art's transformation. Art agrees to the proposition and Elijah starts telling him about his past. He was raised in the Kingdom of Darv, but he's not sure where he originally came from. Elder Rodias was the one who had taken care of him from the time when he was a child. However, the Elder always avoided the question whenever he would ask about his parents. The only memories of his childhood would come as confusing and painful flashes. Elijah had lived a fairly normal life until he broke into the dark orange stage. After that, he experienced a weird surge of energy and blacked out. When he regained consciousness, he was surrounded by these strange black spikes of metal. After that, the Elder told him that it was time for him to leave and explore the rest of the kingdom without even telling him why. Since then, he always had this strange feeling. Although he can't tell what it is, he's sure that it has something to do with his power and where he came from. Now it's Art's turn to fulfill his end of the deal. Just the first sentence leaves Elijah completely shocked. Art tells him that he's a quadra elemental augmenter with two deviances, ice and lightning. Elijah always thought he was the weird one, but now he's finally met a bigger freak than himself. However, he still wants to know about those markings and the color change that Art experienced during his fight with the Elderwood Guardian. Art reveals that he's a beast tamer and what Elijah saw back there was him unleashing his beast will. He is really surprised and asks how old Art is. When Art reveals that he's 11 years old, Elijah is further surprised to realize that he's one year older than him. However, he knows that this is not something he should be proud of. The two boys cannot help but randomly laugh at this silly fact. They have slowly started to bond over their shared trauma. Art suddenly experiences a bout of pain from his injuries. He has to use the last healing crystal from his glove to heal his injuries. As he's doing this, Jasmine also wakes up and quickly hugs him. She breaks down into tears and apologizes to Art for being unable to protect him. Seeing Art's injuries, she quickly tells Elijah to take out their bags from his dimension ring. She uses the emergency med kit in her bag to treat both of their injuries. Art is grateful to both of them, and with that, they start to make their way out of the dungeon. The trio exits the metal shelter. Before they leave, Art wants to search for any survivors, 
Elijah tells him that both Reginald and Brawl were consumed by the Elderwood Guardian before Art started fighting, so they are most likely dead. As for Samantha, he did manage to conjure a metal shelter around her before the structure caved in. However, she was in pretty bad shape, so he's unsure if she survived. It would be extremely difficult to find her in all this rubble. Even the Elderwood Guardian's Beast Corps is probably lost. Elijah uses a spell called Earth's Pulse to try and search for her underground. He quickly finds her buried under the rubble with her heart still beating. Art is left surprised by Elijah's spell as it is normally only possible to search the surface of the ground using Earth's Pulse. Elijah quickly uses his proficiency in Earth Magic to bring the metal shelter to the ground. He opens the metal charger to find Samantha still alive, although heavily injured and burning with fever but she is out of danger now. Jasmine picks up Samantha and they continue on their way back. Art understands that it would be impossible to find the Guardian's Beast Corps in this mess. This means that a priceless treasure would be lost. They suddenly hear rumbling from the ground. Elijah becomes fearful, but Art calms him down, telling him it's fine. A beast emerges from the ground, and it's none other than Sildi. Even Art is surprised to see how much Sildi has grown in the past two years. Elijah is left stunned by the presence of a dragon as they were believed to be extinct. Hence, Art asks him to keep her existence a secret. Elijah recognizes him as someone who defies conventional expectations. He is an 11-year-old who is a quadra elemental with deviances in two elements and a dragon bond. Mounted on Sildi's back, the group embarks on their journey back to the exit. They don't even have to worry about fighting any monsters, because Sildi's presence is enough to scare them away. Sam the finally starts to regain consciousness, so they lay her down to make her feel comfortable. The group is shocked when she reveals that she has the Elderwood Guardian's Beast Corps as well as Art's mask. She managed to save them before they were lost forever. Art takes his mask and tells the group that they will sell the Beast Corps and divide the profit equally among themselves. Nonetheless, Jasmine swiftly informs him that she doesn't desire it. She believes Art is the one who deserves it since he's the one who took down the Elderwood Guardian. Elijah also feels the same way. Samantha also tells him that she's only alive because of him, so it's more than fair that he gets to keep the beast's core. Art thanks everyone and decides to keep it. Seeing the extent of Samantha's injuries, Art tells Jasmine and Elijah to go to the guild hall to bring help while he and Sylvie stay with her to keep her safe. They agreed to Art's suggestion and quickly leave to get help. In the meantime, Art decides to use the scroll he got from the Twin Horns as his birthday gift two years ago to inform his parents that he is safe. Art's attention once again turns to Sylvie. She has gotten very big in the last two years by hunting mana beasts and eating their cores. Art asks her if she can still transform. Rather than telling him, she decides to show him by transforming herself into a much smaller figure similar to how she used to be. Art still feels pain from his injuries. He decides to use the mana from the beast's core to heal them. Now that everyone's safe and out of danger, his mind goes back to Lucas's betrayal. Because of what he did, Brawl died and so many of them got hurt. Art makes up his mind that no matter how long it takes, he's going to get his revenge on Lucas. The emergency team from the Adventurer's Guild arrives and helps Samantha and the rest of the group. Samantha gets the necessary medical help. While Brawl's family has to face the devastating loss of his death, Jasmine and Elijah deliver a thorough account of their experiences within the dungeon to Caspian, the guild master, leaving no detail unmentioned. The guild organizes a hearing for Lucas's betrayal. While they are waiting, Lucas arrives in the guild with his guard. He comes in with his usual arrogant self. Both Jasmine and Elijah gets angry ready to attack him. Yet Art stops them from doing so. Lucas feigns ignorance about their survival and subtly shifts the blame on them for sacrificing their teammate. Despite Caspian trying to de-escalate the situation, Lucas goes on and on and starts blaming the group for sacrificing Brawled. Suddenly, a sword comes flying in his direction, nearly missing his head. Lucas's equilibrium shatters at the sight of blood as the password meningitis is whispered, sending him into a state of uncontrollable panic and distress. The sword was thrown by none other than Hart. Upon realizing this, the guards quickly get into a protective stance to stop him. However, the intense aura coming off of Art is enough to send shivers down their spine. Their bodies start to feel heavy, and they begin trembling with fear. Following Lucas's order, the guards start moving to attack Art. However, they are no match for him as he easily defeats them using only one hand. Slowly but surely, Art continues defeating all the guards and moves toward Lucas. As he is about to attack him, he stops himself and retreats his sword. He apologizes to Caspian, 
telling him that his sword slipped and he wanted it back. Lucas's fearful nature shows itself when faced with Art's terrifying power. As Lucas leaves the room, Art requests Jasmine and Elijah to leave as well because he wants to talk to Caspian alone. Caspian tells him that while he understands the situation, he shouldn't provoke Lucas. This suggestion angers Art. He tells Caspian that he's strong enough to erase Lucas from existence, and his identity will remain a secret. He gets right into Caspian's face to address the suggestion, which he thinks to be a threat towards him. The blood loss emanating from Art is enough to scare even a double-A adventure like him. He calms himself down and clarifies. He assures Art that what he said was with his best interest in mind. He reminds Art that even if he does manage to kill Lucas, the Wyke's house won't sit idly by even if his identity is a secret. They will go after the people close to him, like Jasmine and all the people she's affiliated with. This includes the Twin Horns, both current and former members. Until Art can hold enough power and authority to protect not only himself, but the people he cares about, Caspian advises against taking any extreme measures. He reveals some new information to Art that he didn't know before. Even if he does manage to take down the entire Wyke's house, he will still have to deal with Lucas's half-brother. Putting that aside, Art gets on to the main reason why he wanted to talk to him alone. Art knows his value in this world and realizes that Caspian would need him in the future. So he asks him for a favor. As long as it is within his power, Caspian is more than happy to accommodate. The hearing officially commences. Both Art and Lucas stand awaiting their sentences. First, it's Lucas's turn. For sabotaging and endangering his party members during the dungeon raid, he is stripped of his A-class ranking. Although instead of being devastated, he lets out a smirk, suggesting that this is exactly what he wanted. Furthermore, he also gets banned from re-enlisting as an adventurer. Art is not satisfied with this sentence, but this is something he expected. An offense that would normally land someone in prison only got Lucas a slap on the wrist because of his powerful background. As for Art, he is being sentenced because of his aggression towards Lucas. For his sentence, he's banned from entering Exterius City for the duration of Lucas's attendance at the Exterius Academy. A faint smirk also graces Art's face, a silent acknowledgement that the unfolding of the hearing aligns precisely with the carefully crafted plan he and Caspian had meticulously devised. He puts on an act and pretends to object to the punishment to make it more believable. This manages to fool Lucas, evident from his smirking at Art. He is given permission to continue his career as an adventurer. However, he cannot be caught near Lucas. To Lucas's surprise, the sentencing ends right there. He wants to know the masked swordsman's real identity. He makes the case that he could just take off his mask and easily slip into the city. However, the guild assures him that his identity is being kept secret only to uphold the peace. Selected guild hall matches will keep tabs on Art's whereabouts. With that, the sentencing ends and both Lucas and Art are allowed to leave. Before leaving, Lucas tries to threaten Art, but that is not enough to scare him and he fires back with a threat of his own. After this, Art meets the head of the committee. The whole sentence was planned by Caspian and Art to alleviate Lucas's suspicions and to protect his identity. With a promise to remember this favor, Art leaves the Adventurer's Guild. As soon as he exits the building, he's greeted by Sylvie, Elijah, and Jasmine. Sylvie is very excited to see him. Together, the trio sought to head home. Before they part ways, Art suggests to Elijah that they should go to school together. However, this is not something he has ever thought about. Art remembers that the reason Elijah is trying so hard to climb up the ranks is to make a name for himself as an adventurer. If that's the case, Art suggests he go to Exiris Academy, but Elijah is still not sure. Despite all of his qualifications, you need money and connections to get into Exiris Academy. Nonetheless, Art assures him not to worry about that kind of stuff. Art requests Jasmine to take him home as he has something to take care of first. After thanking Art for everything he has done, Elijah leaves with Jasmine, the real reason Art wanted Jasmine and Elijah to leave was that he sensed Caspian's presence near him. He wanted the chance to talk to him alone. He thanks him for playing along with his little plan. Caspian tells him that he wanted to send him off with a parting gift. He throws him a bag of gold and tells him it's for extra precaution. Although Lucas has seen his real sword, Don's ballad, it won't be a problem as long as Art doesn't take it out. The real problem might be that Lucas has seen Sylvie. Yet, before he can even finish his sentence, that problem is also solved. Listening to his thoughts, Sylvie instantly transforms into a new form. Now, even Lucas cannot recognize her. With everything resolved, Art heads back to Exire City. He takes off his mask and makes a quick stop at a local shop. 
Using the money he got from Caspian, he buys a dimension ring. Despite knowing how expensive they are, he is still left shocked. He had to spend most of his gold on a dimension ring that can barely fit a sword in Beast's core. With this preparation for school, life is complete. Art sets on a carriage and starts heading to Helstie's mansion. On the way, he enjoys the beautiful scenery and wonders what it would be like to be a normal student. Art finally reaches his home at nightfall. He is greeted by his sister, Eleanor, who quickly hugs him and welcomes him back. Art realizes how speedily his sister has grown. With that comes the same concern that every loving brother has, that one day his sister might find someone, get married, and leave. However, he puts that fear aside for the moment to greet his parents. Their interaction goes like their usual greetings, Rhea holds his immaturity while Art playfully mocks his father's unruly beard. As always, the worried mother hugs his son and tells him that she's glad that he's back in one piece. Art hugs her back and apologizes for always making her worry. Vincent, Tabitha, and Elijah also show up. Vincent, also being his usual self, interrupts the family's moment. After the initial greetings are done and family gets together to talk, Art realizes that Jasmine is nowhere to be seen. Elijah informs him that she already left to do a mission with the Twin Horns and had left a letter for him. From the goofy way the letter was written, Art could tell that it was written by Jasmine. Apart from her, there is one more face that's missing. Before Art could even ask, Vincent excitedly tells him that Lilia is currently at Exiris Academy. Tabitha thanks Art for his help in her awakening and tells him that the Helstie family will forever be in this debt. Vincent reaffirms it and tells him that it has been generations since a mage came out from the Helstie house. He tells him that he is not sure about the debt, but he does have a few favors in mind. That favor involves getting Elijah into the Exiris Academy. But before Art could tell him that, Ray suddenly gets up and asks about his dungeon raid. Art and Elijah explain the entire story of the Elderwood Guardian. The family is shocked that Art actually encountered an Elderwood Guardian, a mana beast that parents use to scare their kids into behaving. On the topic of monsters and magic, Art asks Ray what stage he is at. He tells him that he has been stuck at the bottleneck of the dark orange stage. No matter how hard he tries, he just can't seem to break through. Art hands him the Elderwood Guardian's Beast Core. Using the mana from the Beast Core, he should be able to break through. Ray initially refuses to accept it, telling Art that this is something he risked his life for, and so he cannot take it. However, Art taunts him by telling him that he will need it if he wants to catch up to him. Ray gets frustrated and excited as Art reveals that he has reached the light orange stage, which is two stages ahead of him. After thinking about it for a while, Ray accepts the gift and promises to leave him behind the next time they duel. 